Looks like we're live. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another a recreational programming session. How about that? But you didn't expect that shit to happen. So let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start uh, the stream. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So let's do red circle live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch uh, television website? Today we're looking into the focus text editor, right? So I'm going to give the link to uh, twitch.tv slash studying, the place where we're doing all of that. I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. And there we go. The stream has officially started. The stream has officially started. So uh, here's the focus. Uh, simple, fast and fast text editor. Right. So um, I heard about this text editor for quite some time, and it's actually quite famous among the uh, Java beta testers. And the reason why it is so popular among the Java beta testers is because it's entirely written in batch files. <laughs> That's the main reason, right? So, in in fact, it's it's written in Jai. It's just like GitHub is incapable of recognizing Jai files, so that's why it says that it uses batch files because there's a couple of batch files, which I do not necessarily understand why. I thought the entire purpose of the the entire sort of like philosophy of Jai is that. Uh, you know, the compiler itself is a build system. You don't need additional scripts on top of the compiler to facilitate anything. You just have one single file, you just build that file and file does the rest. But still, I, I suppose this is like some sort of old reflexes or like maybe to hook things up into text editors or something like that. I don't really know, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, after all, these, uh, you know, batch scripts are not really that big. So they're just like, you know, the call Jai with a couple of parameters and stuff like that. So anyway, um, so the problem with this text editor that I had is that it literally crashes on my machine and it crashes with a very interesting uh, sort of problem. It crashes with a sig eel. So for those who doesn't know, sig eel is a signal that is sent when uh, the CPU tries to execute an illegal instruction. It's not even a sec fold, mind you. Right, it's not even a sec fault. Sec fault is when the, the application is trying to touch the memory it's not supposed to touch. Sig eel is just like the the code like looks at the memory and the memory contains an, an instruction that CPU is incapable of executing. There's a lot of situation that can lead to that, and this is actually really weird. Right, but, but uh recently I found a way to actually make it work uh right so and because of that i decided to finally do a stream where i look into that text editor on top of that eleonte eleonte suggested to implement something for this text editor because it's open source so you can actually extend it and stuff like that uh and specifically there is a problem uh on linux for this text editor since um you know majority of the developers i suppose are on windows because it's a uh, language for game development and uh, Windows is an operating system for video games, right? So Linux is a real uh, operating system for serious business for serious people and for the video games There is a separate uh, like a niche operating system called Windows, right? So majority of the of the <laughs> So sorry Majority, majority of the Jai developers are game developers, so that's why they use this niche uh, operating system for video games, and that's why they probably don't really test on, on real operating <laughs> systems. <laughs> Right. Because of that, there's some uh, features missing uh, and specifically there is no safe dialogue for, uh, for, for Linux, right? <laughs> so, uh, so Eliont is here, uh, just a second. Uh, we have this report, something similar might be what you're getting. Yeah, I think I already looked into that. So you say it's an issue uh, 92. Uh, so I remember I enable like I basically assume that you wanted to uh, want me to implement this. Right. So and essentially somebody already tried to implement the save dialog for uh, for the text editor and they couldn't because a very interesting problem right so the problem is that the save the platform save dialog that the application sort of designed around is synchronous but to make it sort of like a built-in you need to have an asynchronous one so it's a sort of a conflict between synchronous and asynchronous api and it's not as easy as just like you know calling to uh to a separate like api or something like that but you're saying you're saying there is um, something 
something like this. Oh, you're talking about um, you're talking about the crash. I already kind of fixed the crash. So, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the the editor doesn't run uh, when the CPU doesn't support AS instructions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I I found a workaround for that. I don't know if you guys found a workaround for that, uh, but I found a workaround for that, which I'm probably gonna show on on today's stream. Right. So yeah. Thank you so much for, for letting me know. Uh, essentially, uh, so let, let me actually put um, this thing maybe into the into the references. Uh, right, potential, so, um, I don't know, issue uh, of the potential source of crash. Right, I'm gonna put it in here just in case somebody else is gonna have this entire thing. Uh, right, but to be able to use this text editor, unfortunately, you have to have an access to Jai. So, yeah, but maybe well, like enough people who actually in Jai better actually watch my stream, so maybe they will be able to uh, to make use of that. So, I think I already uh, cloned um, focus somewhere here. So, here it is, I already cloned it. So, and essentially, let's try to build this entire thing. I'm going to use this command line, right? So, I'm going to use this command line and I'm going to uh, run it super quick. So, I don't think it needs to be quiet. We do need import dir and let's just try to build it. Let's just try to build it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, as you can see, it built successfully, right? It built absolutely successfully. So, now uh, I think it created an executable, right? So, uh, focus debug, right? So, here is the focus debug. And if I try to run this focus debug, uh, it crashes, right? It says that it crashes with uh, signal 4, right? Uh, and if we Google up what is a signal 4, uh, POSIX signal 4. Mm -hmm. Uh, Postex signal 4, and I wonder if that's because of the Google. Goddamn Google. Uh, Postex signals. Uh, hmm, some Chinese university or something like that. That's very interesting. Uh, so it's a signal, right? So it's a, an illegal instruction. And it has something to do with uh, calculate mu hash. And mu hash, if I'm not mistaken, is like a custom hash implemented by the one and only, the man, the legend, Casey Muratori. Right, so if we actually go to uh, here, see Muratori, uh, so I think, yeah, it's, it's his hash, if I'm not mistaken, right? So, so Mew hash. And somebody ported that Mew hash uh, to, to Jai, and a lot of people use it. I don't really know what's the main purpose of the hash, uh, I think it's like sort of like a general purpose hash. You can use it for the uh, for the hash tables or you can use it for, uh, you know, computing like, you know, hashes for the files and stuff like that, you know, uh, different stuff. So I think it is general purpose hash. So and it is used in here, right? It is used in here. I'm going to copy paste this thing in the chat. And for people who's potentially watching uh, all of that on YouTube, uh, I'm going to put it in here. Uh, Mio. Uh, hash by uh, Casey Moratori. Right. So it's this one. I probably want to put uh, back uh, back ticks in here. Nya hash. Yes, nya hash. So uh, we've got some subs. Thank you so much, Distontko. Thank you, thank you, thank you for Twitch Prime subscription. I really appreciate that. Uh, Alrighty. So, and let's try to investigate that. Like, I already know uh what kind of the problem i don't really know still don't know what's the problem but i know how to fix that so as you can see it tries to load and merge uh config right so let's actually go there and try to see the context in which this uh, calculate mu hash is used uh right so i'm gonna literally just grab for this specific function and just like find where is it uh, is it used uh, rather where it is defined. So here it is, here it's where it's defined. And we can do calculate mu hash, right? So it is used to calculate whether I suppose a configuration file has changed or not, right? So I suppose, I don't really know how exactly this text editor works, uh, but from what I could understand, um, right, 
uh, it just like reloads the uh, the config file and it can detect whether the config file was changed or not and maybe it can do something on that right maybe there's some sort of expensive operation of parsing the configuration file so it doesn't want to do that if the file didn't change probably i don't really know i didn't really look deep into that but that would make sense that would make sense to me uh so and essentially we can look into this function right so uh let me also grab it and let me also find it uh, grab rn um, so we need to find the definition of this function right so here it is and we already have an assembly in line things right so instantly so in a place where things uh, actually fail with sig il illegal instruction obviously we have some hard-coded assembly stuff well, who would have thought that something like that will happen? Uh, so it also calls to things like mu hash uh, and uh, some other stuff. We can we may look into these kind of things. It, it's actually a very interesting syntax, right? So hash colon vec. So and vec is not really used anywhere, but hash is kind of used somewhere. So this thing, I suppose defines a variable i'm not really familiar with how exactly jai works uh but i suppose it's a way to define a variable but what kind of variable so if it's a vec maybe it's a vec register you define a variable that basically refers to the vector register but then we never really specify which vector register we're referring to does that mean that the built-in like inline assembly of Jai is so powerful that we can make abstract statements like pick whatever uh, vector register is free right now and use that. Is that how powerful Jai is? Really? I can say basically any sort of vector register, just give me whatever vector register you have free as of right now, because maybe uh, of, uh, because of the different optimization, some of the vector register could be taken uh, or something like that. Just like um, use your register allocator and allocate me one of the register. Like, I don't really know how J works. It's just like, this is the implications that I see just by looking at this syntax. And that is, I'm already blown away. If that's actually true, this is fucking insane. Holy shit. Right, I don't really know. It's just like, the, the, this quant kind of implies that you can do this. And holy fuck, that is fucking awesome. <laughs> right? <laughs> because I, I've never seen any language doing this kind of thing. Um... Mm -mm -mm. It doesn't work on your PC though. Yeah, it's too good to be true. So yeah, <laughs> it is too good to be true. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Yoink2000 for um, Twitch Prime subscription. That is insane, meine Freunde. Meine liebe Freunde, that is absolutely insane. Uh, all right, so uh, let's take a look at this kind of thing. Um, right, so uh, let me let me see. So, um, where am I going? So I think I'm actually lost a little bit. So let's actually find this thing. Uh, okay, so I suppose this thing is defined in uh, the modules, right? So in the main modules of Jai. So let's actually find this thing in here, hopefully. Hopefully we'll find it. And if we take a look even more into that, uh, it's even more assembly, right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so it's pretty much implemented in assembly. Um, right. And it fails somewhere here with sig ill. Uh, right. So a proper solution would be probably like figure out, uh, what kind of instruction my CPU doesn't support and maybe make some sort of like if dev somewhere here, or maybe in the main application. So I went with a sledgehammer solution, right? So essentially what we need, we need to calculate the hash. So there is already uh, a hash module in a standard JI library, right? So let's just use that instead. Uh, it's probably worse, right? It's probably worse uh, than mu hash because mu hash is like very carefully designed by Casey Muratori himself, 
right? He tested out very carefully and made sure that it's uh, suitable for these specific cases and stuff like that. He spent a lot of time doing all of that stuff. So, and I'm pretty sure that his hash is better than whatever we have in here. But our goal is to stop our application crashing at least. So using this stock hash is probably gonna be worse, but it's gonna make our application at least run, at least. Right, so we don't want like to have like a super performance or anything like that. Like we want at least see something on the screen because right now we can't even see shit in this mess. Uh, right, so uh, let me let me see what we can do in here. So if I go to new hash, so essentially what we can do, uh, we can just go ahead and like literally return uh, return the bytes. I think it's going to work. And I'm going to just like comment this entire thing out, right? So whatever you put in any of these things is going to use the uh, the thing from the hash, right? So and let's actually try to do the the build. And uh, it doesn't have a get hash, so you're supposed to import it. But as far as I can tell, there is no includes or imports in the new hash jai. So that means it's probably literally included into. Uh, into some something else, right? So let's actually try to find where it is included. We can try to find uh, mu hash jai. Uh, so it is included in main .jai, right? So this is basically the section where all of these things are included, literally just inserted. I think load just literally inserts everything, um, right? And we should have something like imports. Uh, yeah, there we go. So here is the imports of the standard libraries, and this is where we can. Uh, I don't know, just put a hash in here, right? So I don't know how you're supposed to put, I think you're supposed to sort them. No, they're not sorted by the alphabet. Uh, I don't think so. Anyway, so let's try to compile this entire thing and see if it's going to at least work. Um, so I can hear some, some weird people outside. Should probably close the, uh, the window. Anyway, so it's a KGB agent outside. They're trying to, to find me. All right, so it, it, it seems to be working, right? So it seems to compile at least, right? It seems to compile at least. Now, if we do uh, focus debug, it works. So if you guys ever needed like a workaround for this situation, here it is. So you, you can do it like that. It's, I don't know what kind of problems this can introduce, but at least it makes it work. And there you go, here is the focus text editor, the, the one and only, the famous, the legendary text, uh, text editor that you probably heard of, probably not, I don't know, but here it is. So what kind of shit can you do with this text editor? So this is actually rather interesting. So there's some, uh, you know, shortcuts and everything. It reacts to control uh, scroll wheel, right? It reacts to that. Uh, so we can do uh, alt x that shows all of the commands. Okay, that's actually pretty cool uh, So not that many commands, right? So we can create a new file uh, So yeah, I can probably edit something right so it also I, I don't know what that is right so I suppose it's a first line uh, Right, can we write? something like this right can you write hello world and we don't really have any syntax highlighting but i know for a fact that it does support syntax highlighting right so because if i try to main.c it, it can't open a thing that doesn't exist yet it can't really open a thing that doesn't exist yet so this is not something that you can do uh, right, but uh, this is because it's unfinished, right? So this is because it's unfinished. Uh, so, um, yeah. Can I can I open that uh, something that already exists? For, so, for instance, I can probably open the buffer .jai. There we go. So it does have highlighting for uh, for Jai, right? It does have highlighting for Jai, but I'm not sure. Does it have highlighting for C files, right? Because I mean. Uh, okay, let me create a C file in here, right? So, and then I'm gonna go uh, and just try to find main.c and then... So, it detects uh, the highlighting by an extension. And as far as I know, you can put commands in here. And there's no way to put a syntax. Like, how do I enforce a syntax on something? Um, right, so I think there is no way to do that. At least I couldn't find. 
uh, a way to do that, right? At least I couldn't find a way to do that. So I suppose it's purely based on uh, on an extension. And it's probably going to be fixed uh, at some point, that's for sure. Because I personally, uh, what I like to do is I like to open a text editor, uh, open a new file that I never saved anywhere and set a specific syntax, like work on that thing for a while and then save it. Right, this, this is how I work and this is why this is this was the first thing I, I tried to do. I tried to open a new file that I never saved and I was trying to find where do I set the syntax, right? So I couldn't find it. And, yeah, but it does support like uh, this kind of thing. So I wonder how many syntaxes it supports. We can probably try to find that. We can try to do grep and just like literally trying where it looks for a string literal that looks like this. I'm pretty sure this is how it checks for that. Maybe not. Uh, no, this is not how it does that, that's for sure. So it's probably something about extension, extension. Ooh, that's that's a lot. Um, but maybe there is a specifically like um, string literal with just, yeah, there we go. There we go, got it. Easy, busy, lemon squeezy. The years of experience, like I know nothing about this code base, by the way, I purely guessed like how it was implemented, right? So if it's based on extensions, that means somewhere in the code base, there is literally a string literal that contains an extension. And it's a very unique combination of characters uh, that you can literally grab and instantly find that place, right? So I have zero knowledge about the code base, but just like by knowing how the code bases usually behave, uh, I can just compose a grep and find the place and this is how it's done. So this is uh, how many different things it supports, right? So this is how many of them it supports. So, cheers by the way. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, the JavaScript people probably uh, won't ever use this editor anyway. <laughs> gold holy shit i love it uh if they do we'll stop making fun of g <laughs> this is so good i like that so it's, it's we're already uh, off to a great start right so people who develop this thing they have a great sense of humor I like that um all right uh so uh okay go. um so and the main problem if i understand correctly ah what the fuck is going on like dudes all right so I should probably switch to, to focus. Um, you can create a new file, right? So you created a new file and you can't save it. Like I press control S. Nothing happens. N nothing happens. So the only thing it does, it prints this name new file, right? So it only prints that. But nothing, nothing happens, I can show you. Because it is not implemented. Uh, so, and uh, let me, let me see. So I, I wanted to look at some uh, issues, right? So this is the main issues, unable to save the file. And it's a known issue because it's literally not implemented. So the function that is responsible for this kind of thing is called platform get save file name. Uh, we can try to find this function, right? So is it, where is it defined? Uh, so yeah, there we go. So this is actually a quite common thing, right? So we have a platform folder and for each platform, we have a separate file, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. And they probably have the same set of like functions, right? The same interface, so to speak. And depending on the platform, like a different file is going to be included. We can even try to confirm that by literally searching for mentioning of linux.gi, right? And obviously it is loaded uh, in here, right? And as you can see, depending on the current OS or current platform, a different platform file is going to be included and uh, different implementation of these interfaces are going to be used, right? So, and uh, let me actually go to the Linux file and the function that we care about, right? The function that we care about is platform save file name and it's literally not implemented. It, it literally does nothing. It literally does nothing. So, and here is an interesting thing. If we take a look at the same function in the Windows file, uh, we'll see something, right? 
So in the Windows file, uh, we are preparing the usual crazy win, win API structure or something like that. And then we do get open file name. And from what I could understand in this specific um, comment, uh, get open file name is actually blocking. It is actually blocking. So at, at this point, the execution of the main program is going to stop. Right. And then get open file name will create its own event loop that is going to handle the user input. And then the user will navigate and select the file and stuff like that. And then it will close it. And only then the control will resume in here and continue execution. So and kind of like this entire uh, function sort of assumes that it's going to be blocking. Uh, but the problem is that the whole sort of native UI of the editor, right? And by native UI of the editor, I mean the, you know, the UI system that the focus editor uses, right? It's very much asynchronous. It's actually immediate UI, right? The things that are like this uh, sort of like a search stuff or, um, you know, this dialogue, they're not blocking. They're integrated into the main loop of the text editor itself. And that's why it is so kind of difficult to implement this problem, right? So because on Windows, the API is blocking, but on Linux, we have to have a version of API that is not blocking. And it's like, how do you do that? And this is probably why Eleonte tried to debate me into, into solving this problem. But I'm a senior software developer. Like I briefly, it took me like, 10 minutes to just briefly look into the into the code base and realize what kind of stuff you're trying to rope me in. It's not going to work. I know what you're trying to do. I, I <laughs> It really didn't took me like a long to figure out all of that. Like, no, 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 no. Mm, 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 mm. I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not some junior, uh, some enthusiastic junior who will work on this project and jump into it and try to uh, to prove something to somebody. No, no, no. It took me just like a, a couple of grabs and I already see what you're trying to do. I already see that. Uh, so <laughs> but we can try to do something anyway. Uh, why not? Right. So it's a very big, not really very big, but it's rather complex issue and it couldn't be really solved in one go. Uh, right, especially while you're trying to solve a long issue, some things in the code base uh, probably will change. But we can try to we can try to add like um, save dialogue in a style of Control O. Right, in a style of Control O, uh, or at least something like a new kind uh, of this thing. Right. So if we take a look at the at the widgets, right? Uh, so we need to have. Uh, we need to find what happens when you press Control O, right? So when you press Control S, what's supposed to happen is uh, the opening of that blocking window. But when you press Control O, something different happens, right? Something different happens, and uh, maybe we can try to sort of copy and replicate that code. Right, copy and replicate that code. Uh, <clears throat> uh, imagine trying a new editor just to get debated into implementing features for that. <laughs> yep, it do be like that. This is how open source works, by the way. So uh, if you think that open source is, is free, I have bad news for you. <laughs> this is how you pay for open source, right? You, you fix the bug and you are allowed to, uh, to use the open source project. That's actually kind of interesting. What if, like, we, we can imagine an open source project that uh, basically annoys you, annoys you in a style of sublime until you fix one bug in that project. So, yeah, sublime actually annoys you to get the money, but open source project annoys you to actually fix one of their bugs. Or maybe they can even... Uh, <laughs> this is such a funny idea. <laughs> Basically, instead of fixing bugs, the um, the developers can put a stub into the code that detects when a certain bug happens. And when that certain bug happened, it shows pop-up. Hey, so you encountered a bug. You can actually fix that bug in there. Right, or something. I, I think... 
uh, I think uh, something like that Rust compiler already does. At least when something like well-known problem occurs, they may print occasionally a link to uh, like an issue to get more information on that. So, yeah. So, I think something like that already kind of exists, All right? But not in the form of a UI application, right? Mm -mm -mm. Just write in AI to has hallucinate a bug fix. Isn't that called like a codex or copilot or something like that? I don't know. So we need to find a place where we open a file. So maybe we can find that place by literally searching for open file by name, right? Because where we encounter this particular string literal, probably nearby, we have a function that opens up this sort of like a dialogue somewhere nearby let's try to literally literally search for that combination of characters and this is by the way the trick that i keep repeating for um you know for new people on the streams over and over again you are exploring a new application right for example this is your first day at job at your new job and you need to fix uh, a certain button right you need to fix a certain button but you don't know where to search for that button in the source code take the label of the button if it's sufficiently unique right if the label of the button is sufficiently unique just take that label and literally grab it in the entire code base you will find where that button is located and thus you will find the place where the action is triggered or probably some clue where it, the action is triggered and then you can start from there so UI labels and UI text is actually very uh, like useful uh, clues that you can use to find places in the code base. Use that, seriously. With this kind of trick, I, on one of my jobs, I actually significantly impressed my peers. Like they were fucking impressed. How could I find a relevant place in the first day at job? They couldn't fucking believe that it's possible. Like I, they didn't know that trick. Like I, so there was some sort of a problem with some with some button. They suggest just investigate that, and I like just found the problem like within like ten minutes. And it's just like, oh, how did you fucking do that? You see that code base for the first time. I, I just grabbed the labels and I found it. So yeah, <laughs> this is actually super useful. So use that, use that. Th that's the real software development advice. For free, I'm giving you like a useful information for free. Can you imagine that? Mm -mm. So anyway, let's try to find that. Uh, and it will be funny if I actually won't be able to find this place. <laughs> right. uh, okay. So um, open file by me. There we go. Uh, so there you go. So obviously so there's two two places where we do all of that uh so i suppose okay so this is commands and this is some sort of a, like a global uh global thing uh and this is a draw and this is shortcuts to display i suppose this is sort of like a splash right this is some sort of a splash and this is like all of the main actions that you can have in here okay so that's cool. Uh, open uh, file by name. Show open file dialog in search. <sighs> and uh, that's very interesting. So let's try to search for this thing. So if I remember correctly, this particular syntax means that it's an enumeration. Uh, we can try to find the definition of commands. Let's try to, uh, to find the definition of commands. Uh, right, so this is going to be like this. And in here, uh, we have actions, action uh, action editors. And I wonder if it's defined somewhere here. It's not really defined anywhere in here. So let's find action editors. And for the action editors, we have, uh, right. So show open file dialog in search. Uh, right, so it is in fact um, an action. So since an action is an enumeration, there should be some sort of like a huge switch case um, that handles each individual enumeration or maybe some sort of a hash table or whatever, uh, right? And if we can find that hub, that switch case, uh, we can find what is exactly called 
uh, when this kind of action is interpreted, so to speak. You know what I'm talking about, right? So let's go ahead and just like literally search for all of the instances of this specific thing. Uh, and I already see that, like I instantly see that. So here is the main thing and here is sort of like a uh, chunk of that huge switch case. Uh, there you go, here is the switch case that I was talking about, <laughs> right? So what it does, it uh, calls to a function show open file dialog. And here's an interesting thing, depending on like where it needs to be shown, you can kind of pass an additional information to there. So, but uh, the, the function we're interested in is show open file dialog, uh, right? So we can search for that specific function where it is defined, uh, what is it doing? And uh, maybe we can extend uh, this entire stuff. Okay, so it is located within widgets. Okay, this is already interesting. So there's a folder with different widgets. Uh, so let's actually go there. Uh, and all right, delete file dialog, open file dialog, and in the co okay, an open file dialog. We already see the place where we can start expanding things. Right. So uh, essentially, it didn't didn't take uh, take us too long to figure out like this is the point of extension. Right. So we have open file dialog. We have delete file dialog. We probably need an, add, to add another one, which is a save file dialog. And what we're going to implement there, probably something similar that we have in open file dialog. Uh, right. So <laughs> is this the power of senior developer? Uh, asks Drocker. Uh, I guess it's a power of grep. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> What's funny is that, like, I'm not even using any uh, IDE or any sophisticated system or anything like that. It's just literally, literally grep and find and logic. Right. You just like, uh, the thing is that um, you look at the application and you try to predict how it would implement roughly and you use that prediction to sort of like target, grab and find to specific places. Right. And it works in the majority of the situations if the code base is sane. Right. So there are some code bases where it doesn't really work because they're so insane. But this is the same code base. I really freaking like it. Uh, it's a very good code base. So I can very quickly navigate and stuff like that. Uh. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So uh, show open file dialog. So what this function does. All right, so what this function does from root. Uh, so I don't really know what this um, parameter means. Derive the, oh, from root, probably uh, from root of the file path, right, of file system. Okay, so that makes sense. I get active editor and buffer. So this one is interesting. Uh, if active global widget is editors, uh, buffer has file, not particularly interesting. Ooh, this one is interesting. Active global widget, we set it to open file dialog and then open file dialog mode mode. So the mode is actually the parameter in here and then we refresh entries. This is interesting. This one is interesting. It is probably some sort of a global variable that communicates to the main loop what is current, what is the current widget, right? Because you can have several widgets opened up uh, some way here, right? So this is the focus debug. So you can have the commands, right? So something like the commands in here or the open file stuff. And I suppose this is, this is just my hypothesis. I don't know for sure. This is some sort of a global variable that tells the main event loop what is currently open. Is that the open file dialog or is that a command thing or something like that? So that means somewhere in the main loop, there is a switch case that switch cases upon active global widgets, probably. I don't freaking know that. But if I were implementing this thing, I would implement it like that. And it's also within the spirit of immediate UI. Right, because it feels like the whole UI in focus is immediate UI. So I would presume that this is how it roughly works. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and just like grab for uh, active global widget. Right, so, okay. So, 
Uh, so here's the editors and uh, as you can see we are uh, assigning global widgets to different things so I suppose we sort of switching the global widget to some different places and so we here we comparing it right so is there something like case uh, there's not uh, that oh okay so here is the if I suppose the most interesting stuff is within the main file right it's within the main file and I already see one switch case in here so this is definitely a switch case when you see if with equals equals but without the right hand side this is a switch case and this is probably uh what we have in here right so handled maybe handle a common action that applied to all widgets so it's some sort of a flag that checks whether something was handled already ah i see <laughs> i know what it is I freaking know what it is. This is a common problem with like that I encountered with the immediate UIs is that when uh, essentially there is an event and you draw several widgets and one widget handled the event and you don't want to propagate that event to the rest of the immediate widgets. So you have to somehow stop that. So yeah, you, you can introduce some sort of a, like a variable that sort of like tells, do, do not propagate this event further, right? Do not call the rest of the things. <laughs> All right, I see what it is. I think, I think that's what it is. Um, right. So pass events to active widgets, right? So and we have active global widgets. If it's editors, we do that. And if it's open file dialog, we call to... Uh, open, fi open file dialog handle event. That is very interesting, my friend. That is very interesting. So let's try to find this kind of thing. So uh, where is it defined? Uh, so this is where we're handling this entire stuff. And I suppose we went back to widgets open file. Right. Okay. And then there are different events, and depending on different events, uh, it does different things. And I suppose it can also switch the active uh, global widget, right? Does it switch the active global widget? Probably not, uh, but maybe it deactivates one of the global widgets. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So the main sort of communication point about what is the currently working widget is active global widget a global variable active global widgets and different widgets uh, basically work on that variable switching it to something checking it from time to time and the main loop uh, switch cases on that global active widget and call to corresponding widgets okay so th that makes a lot of sense um that makes a lot of sense maybe we can even draw that i wonder if i can draw that Uh, active I'm gonna call it active global widget right so this is an active global widget and essentially there is a main loop right there is a main loop that uh, checks this active global widget periodically and then you have different widgets like widget one uh, that essentially um, can set uh, this entire thing there's another widget two uh, that can set this entire thing and then main based actually maybe it has to be like a, in a different direction based on active global widget can then sort of like go and pick into uh, different widgets in here and it's sort of like uh, the active global widget becomes some some sort of like a state machine right it's a state machine and depending on what's the currently active we call to different uh, you know widgets that can also change the active global widgets and stuff like that or something like that. This is how I see that but I'm not 100% sure um, so yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I suppose one of the things we can try to do we can try to understand what are sort of like the main um, the main methods of a single widget, right? So because we have a lot of different widgets in here and probably one of the things we're gonna do, uh, we're going to create save file dialog.gi, right? So we're gonna create this kind of thing. But what we're supposed to put in there, right? We can even include it somewhere. So let's actually find all the places like where this kind of stuff is included, uh, right? So this is where it is included. Uh, and there we go. We just introduced a, si a save file dialog. 
we already made one step further towards the implementing that feature, <laughs> right? So we already created a file that will probably hold the, the logic of that save file dialog somehow. We don't really know how exactly, but uh, we're already there. Uh, so it's kind of funny, like I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, we're already getting closer to implemented feature probably. Uh, maybe not. Goddamn neighbors are smoking. Freaking, okay. I should have not opened the window, but if I didn't open the window, I would freaking fry life because it's so hot in here it's insanely hot all right it seems to be working right so we managed to uh to essentially include the syntax thing okay so let me see what kind of methods we even have in here how many methods we have so we have init open file dialog this one is interesting so there used to be more stuff in here okay and there is some sort of like a global open file dialog uh, is it defined anywhere? I don't think, I think it's... Okay, so there is a... Okay, so here is the open file dialog. Uh, right, and uh, so it is a structure that store... Okay, this one is rather interesting. So there is a lot of interesting stuff in here. So maybe we need to introduce like a similar thing, right? So a scope file, I remember that it basically makes everything in here sort of like a private but i don't rem don't know what is a scope expert uh right i don't know if it's a scope expert so here we want to have save file dialog uh struct and what we want to have in here we probably want to have something like init it or maybe something something else but even there init open file dialog uh it doesn't even have anything in here so what is the refresh entries this one is a very interesting function so what it does <clears throat> um oh so the open file dialog right the open file dialog if we do focus the, uh, this kind of thing um right it contains several entries in here and i suppose refreshing entries is just refreshing these things right maybe um you know reading them again um mm -mm. Scope expert is the default state. It's there just to switch back to from scope file, scope module. Okay. Um, mm, scope file, scope module. And yeah, okay. I, I suppose I'm going to be just copying this entire thing, right? So I'm going to be just copying. Uh, all right. So open file. And uh, so here's the entry, right? So we can have different entries in here. Uh, so there's also text input, and I suppose text input is one of the widgets. All right, so this one is actually rather useful. So maybe we, we are going to have a text input. Uh, so we have some sort of entries. Let's just have a text input, just a text input and nothing else. Uh, right, so this one is going to be a scope file. Uh, right, so it's going to be hidden from the rest of the thing. So scope file, it's basically... Um, um, everything below here is private and it's not going to be visible outside of that module um, if I understand correctly and uh, scope expert is sort of like a public right so it's publicly available uh, and because it's the default thing uh, save file dialog save file dialog so by the way I like I act like I'm implementing this feature like I don't know if I will be able if I manage to implement all of that I'm just like trying to like explore and see like what is possible to do in here and how this entire thing works like i don't know probably i probably won't be able to implement something usable but i think i feel like we are moving in the right direction that's roughly where you want to go maybe I, I don't know it's just like just exploring just exploring um and here's an interesting thing so init open file dialog where do we call that thing <clears throat> excuse me so where do we call that uh, so let me just, I'm pretty sure it's called one time. Uh, yeah, I was right. It's, it's, it's called one time in a workspace, right? Uh, we initializing a lot of things in this huge ass function. Uh, and what is that huge ass function? What is this? Maybe update workspace buffers. Hmm. So there's a notion of workspace and there's a notion of buffers, uh, right? So there's some sort of a scan complete 
so process changed so there's some file watchers and stuff like that and somewhere within this entire thing we need to open file uh, dialog right so workspace space complete shut down scanners reset so th this is a very sophisticated multi-threaded system in here that is scans and just collects things and holy fucking shit oh my god uh and if, if everything was scanned correctly apparently we initialize open file dialog <laughs> i have no idea what the fuck is going on it looks crazy uh but i i'm gonna just assume that maybe this is where we want to call init uh save file dialog probably maybe maybe that's what we want to do maybe it's completely redundant because like even you need open file dialog doesn't really do anything so maybe we shouldn't do that but i mean i'm really scared of this code so this workspace thing is intimidating this is how i would uh phrase it mm -mm. it is a little bit intimidating um, so there is, is there something like threats in here? Yeah, there's thread groups. Holy fucking shit. It's multi-threaded application. Holy fuck. Uh, oh, I'm really scared of this uh, part of code. So I'm going to actually focus on save file dialog. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> mm, so, uh, let's continue. Right. So I'm going to be just, just slowly copying this entire stuff in here. So if we call to scope um expert so that means there's something uh like this in here so scope file uh so it's it's private again right and then another scope okay so i see now why it is like that it's kind of weird but uh all right i need open file dialog so Maybe I'm gonna ju just do it like this actually. Right, init uh, save file dialog. Right, so we need save file dialog. Uh, and here we're gonna do save file dialog init it. True. We don't really have any, uh, you know, entries in here, so we, we can't really refresh anything. Uh, right, and here we say there used to be more stuff in here. Uh, there, there never was uh any <laughs> stuff here because <laughs> yeah so it's just like this is what we started with there there never was any stuff in here uh right uh, which is technically true so do we want to deinitialize some stuff we don't really uh allocate anything right so so what else do we have in here so we probably need to do handle events do we also draw this thing how do we render this entire stuff mm -hmm. ah so these are different actions these are different actions uh i just re oh maybe handle event is actually the thing that draws this entire stuff uh, right maybe handle text input event uh all right and so this is entire thing and then we do text input handle event and it's probably inside of the text input and then inside of text input event uh we do some stuff map event uh-huh i just realized that i don't know where all of that is rendered mm -mm. I just don't know where all of that is rendered. But maybe this is because I'm a little bit tired. I'm a little bit tired. So uh, we need to make a small break. Let's make a small break. I'm going to refill my water. And I'm not going to drink tea because it's too hot right now. And after that, we're going to try to figure out. So I, what I want to figure out is just to see like how all of that is rendered. Right. So, okay. Let's make some break. Um, all right. So people have told me, uh, right, so that the, there is a module called draw.gi, right? Uh, and in here, we have a thing that draws a single frame, right? And within the single frame, we probably uh, just look into active global widget and depending on active global widget, we can uh, do draw open file dialog, right? We can draw open file dialog. I'm surprised 
this thing is not complete. Why this thing is not complete? Is that because not everything... Huh? Okay, so let me try to do the... Uh, so for those who does not know, complete uh, means that if there is any case that is not handled in here, it won't compile. It sort of forces you to handle each individual case in a switch case. And this is a switch case, by the way. Uh, right, so it's in Jai, it starts with if. In Jai, it starts with if. Right. You may say that it's, it's kind of a weird switch case. It is kind of weird switch case, but in my opinion, it actually works out really well. Uh, it actually works out really well. I can show you. So it kind of solves one of the problems that I had with any other language out there. So essentially, quite often, you write an if condition, like, uh, you know, x equal 10, right? And you have some sort of like a, a process x. And at some point you decide, okay, so x can also be equal to 20. So now I need to turn this into a switch case. To turn it into a switch case, like what do I have to do? I have to uh, change this uh, key, uh, keyword. Uh, right. Then I have to remove this entire stuff. Then make a case in here 10. Right. And then I have to put the break in here. And like I have to rework the entire sort of construction. I have to rework this entire construction. In Jai, what I have to do, I have to just take this right side, copy paste it, case, boom, it's already switch case. What the fuck? So yeah, because it's it's actually a very common mutation of the code when you just have an if condition that you want to then turn into switch case so you can then add more cases in here. It is actually very ergonomic surprisingly it looks weird at first but when you think about it it actually makes sense uh right so it allows you to quickly turn if into switch case um so this is kind of cool i think so it's just like you move that value and there we go you you have a case branch in there so i don't know m maybe this is not how the logic went and maybe uh, uh john is going to change that in the future but this is how i interpreted the the reasoning behind this kind of weird construction and it kind of makes sense to me um hmm, that's actually a very good point uh, and we have switch as a variable name free yeah exactly so it's actually a very useful variable name um so let me try to do the following thing. I'm going to, um, oh, wait a second, maybe not, because I never actually added a new sort of case in here. So let me try to first build uh, this entire thing. And let me try to build this entire thing and see if it is building. So it is complaining uh, because I forgot the uh, semicolon in here. Hmm. Okay, so I think it's building. It's taking some time, uh, but it is building. Because I'm uh, on my machine, on my old machine. So if, if I put complete in here... Okay, so there's something that is not handled in here. And the question is, what is not handled in here? And the thing that is not handled in here is editors. Uh, and I wonder why. Why editors is not handled... Okay, so it's basically skipped, I suppose. Yeah, so essentially, if I understand correctly, the editor's case is when there is no active widget, like the editor itself, the main window is active. So that's why it is not complete, right? Because in that case, you just want to ignore drawing any of these widgets in here. I guess that makes sense, right? I guess that makes sense. Uh, anyway, uh, and I suppose one of the things we want to add in here is just like uh, save file dialog and we want to be able to draw save file dialog right. so uh draw file uh, open file dialog what do we do in here uh oh so it has a special id so we need to allocate a special id for this entire thing okay draw save uh file dialog and we do, yeah, so we're including open file dialog. I'm not really sure if I want to do that in here. 
So what is UI ID? This one is rather interesting. So is it defined anywhere in here? Uh, so let's go ahead and search for this magical, magical object. I'm pretty sure it has the definition that looks like that. There you go. It is enumeration and essentially um, open file dialog. The rest will be derived from lock. Do we have to add a new thing in here? I'm going to add a new thing in here. I have no idea why it is like that, but I'm going to add a new thing in here. Right. So, uh, okay. I'm just copying. I'm just replicating whatever I have in here. So this is a save, uh, draw save file dialog. And this is what I see in here. Uh, if UI active is not equal to none. Uh, oh yeah. I think this is a classical, uh, classical immediate UI stuff. Figure out the uh, dialogue box. I'm surprised none of that stuff is abstracted away. That is a pretty sophisticated choice, I'm not gonna lie. Right, so it's a draw open file dialogue and it's a very sophisticated choice, look at that. Um, so, yeah. Mm hmm. So UI active is basically what is the current active widget. If uh, something is currently active and that active thing is not us and that um, and us is not the child and we are not child of the active thing, we just close this entire stuff. So there's also scroll bar ID. We probably don't need it right now, but maybe we will. So what I'm thinking is that we definitely will need this thing, right? So we definitely will need this thing, but for the save uh, file dialog. So for those who doesn't know what the fuck is all of that, right? In immediate UI, you track different widgets with very, like with unique IDs, right? You track them with unique IDs. And that's essentially what we have in here. And there's usually global variables like this, like what is the current active that holds the current uh, sort of like ID. Right. And in here, uh, if uh, nothing is active or something is active that is not us and uh, we are not a child of something that is active. So there is some sort of like a parent child relationship between widgets in here. I do not fully understand. In that case, we just hide the open file dialog. Which is rather interesting. Should we do this kind of stuff? Um, should we do this kind of stuff for the save uh, file dialog? Maybe. I don't really know. But maybe let's just like, you know, use that. But in that specific case, we probably have to do, uh, you know, save. Hide save file dialog, which means that we need to introduce a new thing that closes the file save file dialog. Right. So, and uh, save file dialog. So, what do we have? We have initialization, and here we have a hide uh, save file dialog. And how do we even handle that in an open file dialog? So, hide open uh, file dialog, activate editors. And what is activate editors? Uh, that's a very interesting question. Maybe we can just call this function, uh, and that will basically just do the magic trick. Uh, activate editors. So what is going on? Where is the definition of this thing? Uh, oh, okay. So it just sets the active global widget to editors and makes the cursor blinking. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Uh, that's the whole thing. So that's kind of funny. All right. So that makes sense. Um, all right. And let's go to draw. And what else can we do? So here we're trying to figure out the dialog box size. Uh, draw rounded rectangle. Maybe that's literally what I'm gonna do. So there is a little bit of a math involved into figuring out the box for, for the dialog. And let's just draw that box without any implementation or anything like that. Let's just draw that box and call it day. 
right? Because our goal is to introduce something meaningful, I suppose. Uh, right, and that's what we can try to do. So let's try to compile uh, everything that we introduce in here because I haven't compiled for quite some time. So maybe it doesn't even work anymore. Uh, okay, so this one have to, has to be save. Uh, save file dialog. So let's actually align because everything in here, in here is perfectly aligned. Let's actually keep it tidy because this is not our code. This is not our code. We not, do not enforce our rules into somebody else's code. We are guests in here. When you're being a guest in someone else's project, you respect their formatting, you respect their rules. Right. So this is very important. This is very important. So when you come to somebody's project, you do not argue uh, what is the best formatting, whether you have to use tabs versus spaces. No. You look what the project already does and you shut the fuck up and just use whatever the project does. That's how you, uh, you know, respect somebody else's project. Right? So you just respect the rules of that specific project. So, so everything in here is aligned, so we're going to align it as well. <laughs> uh okay so uh what do we have in here save file dialog so what does it save uh is not a member of enumeration okay so we need to actually extend even more enumerations uh all right so let me see let me take a look at the definition uh so it's probably defined somewhere here no Active global. Where active global widget? Where are you? Oh, okay. You guys didn't even define a separate enumeration here. I see what you guys did in here. Okay, okay, okay. So you, yeah. Right. So you simultaneously define a variable and enumeration. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so save file dialog. So this is a new kind of a file dialog. Uh, let's try to rebuild. And what else do we have in here? Okay, and this is why complete is so useful, right? So it makes you go through all of the places where you have to modify this entire thing. Okay, so active global widget um, mm -hmm, handled. Aha, uh -huh, so you have to handle events in here. So it's kind of cool that I didn't really know what kind of methods do I have to put into my save uh, file dialog. But through implementing like everything that is needed, the code itself kind of tells me what kind of methods do, should they have in there. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. So let's go and just implement this entire thing. So I think I'm going to copy paste. Um, uh, open uh, file dialog so this is kind of this is what we want to have in here uh, and it should return I, I could have actually copy pasted the whole signature in here uh, save file dialog all right and what do we have in here so we map uh, event to action uh, and depending on what kind of think we have in here is going to be like different actions and what not uh so you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna uh, actually handle keys so event type key pressed and i want to actually see what kind of key was pressed right so how do i check uh, like the uh like the keys the specific keys let me go into the map event to action let's find the definition of this thing because i'm pretty sure that's where it is all defined all right and where is the specific key uh key code right so this is the key code uh and in a save file dialog and uh key code is do we have like escape something like escape so in the case of escape i just want to hide the save dialog. That's basically what I want to do. Uh, right. And in that case, I suppose I want to return true. And in here, I'm going to return false. Right. So essentially, we want to create like a minimal basic save dialog without any function functionality. Right. So when we try to press Control S, we want something to appear like a rectangle. And when we press Escape, we want it to disappear. So that's my goal for today, at least. 
Right, because implementing like a full function in save dialog is actually a very difficult task, and it's probably over like two hours or anything like that. Um, right, so yeah, I don't want to do that. Um, uh, yeah, I know that I can look for, for the keys in this module. It's just like going there and just doing control F and stuff like that takes time. So I just like, implemented something and if it's not going to compile, only then I'm going to go there. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's how I work, right? It's kind of weird sometimes, but it's just like sometimes some of these small actions like take too much effort for me. So I kind of postpone them uh, until I do the, the compilation phase where I just compile and go through the compilation first. <laughs> Right, because I don't want to break my flow, uh, if that makes any sense. Um, anyway, so uh, I, I guess that's basically it. I guess that's basically it. So if I try to to try to compile, okay, so we go to that. Okay, with percentage. So this is something that we don't have uh, in here. Aha! This is probably part of the open file dialog variable. So if I go to open file dialog uh, with percentage, uh, right? So I think I saw it. So this is uh, this thing. How much of the screen? Okay, so we can literally add that thing to the save dialog in here, because why not? Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, anything else? Do you want anything else? Okay. Um, yeah, so this is because I also need to do using, using save file dialog. I have some sort of other completion, surprisingly. And declare it with normal and in open file dialog, what's with normal? Is it defined anywhere? Uh, I suppose it is defined. Okay, so we can copy paste it here as well. So it's a constant. It's kind of cool that you can have constant in here. I wonder, can you access those constants like this? Uh, you should be able to, otherwise there's not that much point in defining them inside of the structure. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Mm -mm. All right, and declared uh, width animation. Oof, this one is weird. Mm, so there is some sort of animation stuff uh, okay, so do you have, like, is there some sort of animation when I, like, open this entire thing? This is kind of weird. Like, why do you have animation? Probably. I don't see any animations, to be fair. But there is some sort of animation. <clears throat> so let me, let me see, let me see. So with anim, open file dialog with anim. Uh twin animation and it's probably does it have some sort of a state i can just include that i can just include this entire thing and see uh if it's going to compile at least maybe it's will compile uh if it's some sort of animation it has to be pulled somehow um so i'm not 100 percent sure mm -hmm. all right so input rect height so this is another thing Aha, uh -huh. and it very much depends on this kind of thing. And font UI line height. So maybe we also need to include this kind of thing. Uh, so I didn't fully copy paste everything apparently, which is fine. This is why we have compilation phase to actually tell us uh, and declared thing entries. Okay, so this one is interesting. Uh, so this thing, I suppose, also renders the entries. So entry height, if I have an entry height, so it is. Uh, so what if I say that the amount of entries we're going to have one, right? So what if I have just one entry in here? Mm -hmm. it seems to be compiling. So I suppose this is the thing with the entries, but we don't really care about the entries per se. I think we care more about input. Yeah, so maybe we should have not copy pasted this thing. Uh, right, so maybe we should not copy pasted this thing. Draw the filter input. Yeah. Let's actually try to put this thing in here. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I lost the draw input filter. So cut top. Ah, whatever. Well, let's just keep it as it is. So everything seems to be compiling, right? Everything seems to be compiling. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and try to uh, run the focus, focus debug. So one of the things we have in here, uh, let me show all of the commands. There should be save. Uh -huh. Where is save though? So if I do new and then I do save. Okay, so there is save all and control plus S. I want to find where do we call the platform thing. So if we go back to the platform, uh, specifically for Linux, platform, save, uh, save, get save file name. Uh, let me see where do we call this entire thing. Where do we call it? Uh, okay. So we call this in two places in a buffer. Save buffer to new file on disk and save buffer to disk. All right. So and as you can see, this entire thing is blocking. Uh, this entire thing is blocking. And that means this entire thing also should change. This entire thing also should change. Uh, right. So essentially, this entire code should go somewhere else. And save file on disk should basically activate the save widget, um, right, or something like that. So, or yeah, that's that's how it should go. So for now, what I want to do uh, on Linux, I want to simply activate the save um, the save widget, right? Save file widget. Uh -huh. um, open. Didn't I have open file? I think I never had it. So that means in an open file dialog, there should be show. Yeah, show open open thingy. Right. So because there is a hide, and we need to to have a show, show save file dialog. And in here, what do we do? We we do the, just additional thing. But the most important thing we do in here is uh, set the active global widget to save file dialog right and essentially in the platform uh, where was the pla ah, i think it's linux yeah it's linux uh here what we want to do we want to show save file dialog right so if we're on linux uh, we're just going to return false. That means we couldn't save anything. But we're also going to activate the save uh, file dialog just to test if it's going to if it's going to show anything at all. Uh, right. So and let's go ahead and try to recompile this entire thing. Uh, I just want to see if it's going to show anything. Right. If it's going to behave the way I expect it to behave. Uh, um. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so it seems to be compiling, and uh, let me see. So um, I have this stuff. All right, I'm gonna put some things in here. All right, so let's write hello world. Uh, okay, one, two, three, four. And if I try to press Control S, do you see this shaisa? And according to the logic that we uh, code it. If I press escape, it should disappear. Ow, bow, bow. First try. <laughs> like, I see this code base for the first time in my entire life. Uh, you could say that this is because your experience of toy developer, but that also means that the code base is reasonable. It is not convoluted. So, yeah, it's more props to code base rather than me. Right, I'm just a grapper. I'm just a stupid grapper. I look at the, the code, I see that it uses some functions, I just grab those functions and that's it. And if the code is good enough, you will, you will basically follow these breadcrumbs and find the relevant places. So, yeah. 
props to developers of Focus. This is a goddamn good code. So compliments from Zosin. I do approve of that. So um, yeah, and essentially the, the only thing that is left to implement right is basically the functionality of the of the save dialog, right? So I, I suppose you can just copy paste the chunks of open file dialog in here for uh, navigating files and for filtering and stuff like that. Right, but also there is a little bit of a difficulty with this part, right? Because this specific call is expected to be asynchronous, right? It is expected to be asynchronous. So that means um, on Linux in here, we just have to open the save dialog and simply exit out of this. But it goes even further because you see here, you should return whether you manage to save this thing or not. So the synchronicity of this API leaks even higher in the abstraction. It leaks even higher. So we need to look um, somewhere here, right? So we need to look somewhere here. Mm -mm. So where do we call this thing? Uh, specifically, yeah, unsaved buffers. So yeah, so save buffers. I think some way here, maybe, yeah. So, and essentially, um, the actual saving, the actual saving should happen somewhere within the save file dialog, specifically within the handling the events. So, essentially, somewhere here, if you press, like, enter, right, then you basically perform all of this saving code. Right, all of that saving code you perform it there. So where is the platform? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of that stuff should go into save file dialog. But this is a kind kind of a tricky operation. And again, so according to the to the discussion in here, we want to preserve both, like this asynchronous built-in editor window, and also synchronous native one for the operating system. So we should be able to handle like synchronous and asynchronous you know save dialogue simultaneously depending on the parameter or something like that so it gets even more complicated than that it gets even more complicated than that but i suppose the first step could be just implementing a functional save file dialogue handle you know save file dialogue uh, right mm -mm. Okay. Dropy, thank you, thank you so much for Twitch Prime. I made your channel because of my friend in uni. It's been really helpful and entertaining since. Uh, you're welcome. I'm really glad that people in universities watch me. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an unsaved file dialog which saves stuff? Probably, I don't know. So it, it needs, we, we need to actually go a little bit deeper than uh, what I did in here because I did like a shallow, very shallow thing. Um, so what we can do, can we do something like actually useful that could be used maybe in the future? Um, right. So we can partially implement this feature. We can, uh, let's create, maybe put some sort of a text in here saying not implemented yet. <laughs> Cause why not? <laughs> Just like literally, yeah. So just put the text, not not implemented. Um, so we, uh, <laughs> then you can press escape and it's just like, it's, you, you can't save files on, on Linux. Um, mm -mm. So let's go ahead and try to do that, I suppose. Uh, so that means we have to do and draw. It's kind of interesting that um, all of the drawing methods are located outside of the widgets. So the widgets themselves, they don't really know how to render themselves. And it's the responsibility of this draw module. So yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. So excuse me. Um, so there is something, I think the plan, uh, how can I jump to, to this message? Is there any way? See, okay, see thread, I can see the thread. Uh, to remove the native dialogue and use an uh, editor, maybe uh, can confirm plan to keep both because some people need their 
uh, custom pins in the window dialog. Oh, okay, I see that. So I said, by the way, I I think that's like m the main reason why Sublime uses the native like operating system dialog. Um, right. And even on Linux, it uses JTK. But I think, I think on, on Linux, uh, Sublime uses G JTK all the way through, right? So I feel like the menus, like a file, uh, help and stuff like that, are also JTK. So I think it's, it's like basically JTK application on Linux. Um, I really hate the Sublime way. I use a package to avoid that. Mm. Is this the editor written in batch? Yes, it is an editor written in batch. <laughs> so if you take a look at, uh, at the languages, it's 100% batch files. <laughs> Can your Linux do that? Can your Linux do that? I didn't freaking think so. Um, anyway. <clears throat> so, uh, draw, save, file, dialog. So... Where, how do you render the text? Is there, so I suppose it's just like a draw text. So there's the label. Okay, so there is a label. Where do we use the label? How do we use the label? Uh, okay, so it's just like a draw text. Um, so this is an input rectangle. Mm -mm. And draw text input. Oh, it's just it's a text input specifically. Um, so and in label. Yeah, I see. I see. I see. I see. So maybe we can find something relevant within the draw text function itself. It should probably. Uh, do the usual prepare text. Yeah, sim prepare text and, uh, you know, so small font icons small. This one is interesting. All right, so we prepare the text. So in the icon, icon, excuse me. What the hell is icon? Um, icon is a string. Huh. Oh, I can, it could be actually like a Unicode or something or whatever. Yeah, maybe. And then we just draw that text. So essentially the text is drawn through the, um, through the sim. Oh yeah, and font icon small is basically actually hints for that. So you, you basically store the icons in the font. It's like font awesome or whatever, right? So it's a font with, with icons and I wonder if we can is there like a font directory in here so there's a fear code huh font I literally sent font awesome and you guys use font awesome okay so <laughs> all right I see how we yeah, I see how we done that <laughs> okay it kinda, it's kind of bizarre to see that outside of web applications because I got used to seeing that specifically on web applications but maybe i've been out of the loop with like actual real software development for quite some time uh right <laughs> uh we got some gifted subs thank you so much koi coder for gifting uh one month to obi-wanus thank you thank you thank you that's pretty cool oh i suppose obi-wanus is like the main developer of focus yo that's such an honor thank you so much Thank you so much for visiting my stream. That's actually pretty cool. The creator of the focus is actually watching our stream right now. What the fuck? Uh, anyway, so let's just go ahead and draw some text, I suppose. I'm going to just copy paste this entire thing. Uh, the question is like, where do we have to even do that? Draw file dialog. Um, so we draw the rectangle. Uh, and what I'm thinking is that, so this is the text width, uh, but maybe we have to use a different font. What kind of fonts do we have? I presume that this is a global thing, right? So it must be some sort of a global thing so we can find the definition of that stuff somewhere. 
Uh, all right. So default font icon small. Okay. So font UI size. Let's actually use font UI big size. Um, it's it's just a size. Yeah, it's not what I want. This is what I want. Yes, yes, yes. Um, font UI. Yeah, let's let's use font UI. I don't know what that is, but uh, I'm gonna assume that, that that's what I want. Uh, so and this is gonna be font UI. Um, so save dialog is not implemented yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means this is going to be font UI, character height. And this is some sort of a button stuff. So button X. Uh -huh. So here I see we're trying to center that. Half of the box minus half of the text. So this is a classical centering. And I suppose um, this is basically the rectangle so we can say box rect right and that effectively will center everything uh the text color right depending on what we have in here uh if enabled i suppose we can just like always use ui default uh and here we're using font ui i suppose that is it right okay so let's give it a try um i'm going to Where's the Jai? <clears throat> okay, that surprisingly come out. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna try to put some stuff in here and then control S. So is not implemented yet. Uh -huh. Yo! So <laughs> that was easier than expected. So though I feel like computing this specific box. It's kind of an overkill right, like that, right? So because I copy pasted like a lot of this stuff from open file dialog and as you can see, it's like, it uses a lot of shit in here. Like is any of that really needed? So also redraw requested, like if, if we just want to show something like this in here, I, I feel like it's not needed. Um, right. On Linux, uh, yeah. Okay. So dialog is not implemented. Uh, on Linux, on Linux yet. Uh, yeah. So let's actually do like that. Uh, maybe it could have been done a little bit simpler, but to make it simpler, I actually have to read this entire thing and understand it, and I don't want to. <laughs> I basically treat this chunk of code as a black box. Right. So I know that in the output of that black box, I have this thing that contains the rectangle that basically places this thing somewhere here. How exactly does that? I don't know. And I just don't want to read this thing. You know what I'm talking about? So I, I'm just treating this piece of code as like a black box. Uh, right. So, but I feel like it is overkill because it involves animation. And stuff like that, I'm not sure. But maybe this part is a little bit of an overkill, but this one looks reasonable, more or less. This one looks reasonable. Uh, so, Yesu, Yesu, Yesu. And let me try to run the focused bug. And mm -hmm. let's do save dialog is not implemented on Linux yet. All right. So that is interesting. I, I kind of, I feel like, Escape didn't work. Did I break escape? Escape doesn't work. Though clicking away actually kind of works. Then control S. Huh, that's very really weird. Why escape does it? I remember it working actually. Um, maybe I'm hallucinating that. Because, ah, because I was explaining thing and I changed escape to enter as, you know, as an example. And enter happens to be a valid value as well. So, I see. Okay. <laughs> this kind of stuff happens to me way too often for some reason. Uh, especially when I'm explaining things, I ch just change the code, but then I do not realize that the changes that I made actually affect the behavior of the code. And it's just like, then I spend an hour like to debug this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's actually small, but this is because I. Ooh, that's kind of cool. 
and then you press escape and there we go so does it make sense to submit that as a pull request <laughs> because essentially this is this could be like a first step towards a safe dialogue i guess right uh so it makes sense to submit that all right so i'm gonna work on that a little bit more off screen to make it a little bit more presentable um just cleans things up and stuff like that and i'm gonna submit that as a pull request uh i'm gonna submit that as a pull request i'm also not sure about the workaround uh with mu hash should i also submit that as a separate sort of like a pull request but uh, i'm not sure about the mu hash okay i'm, I'm gonna explore uh, research what exactly is going on with mu hash i what i want to do i want to actually pinpoint exactly what's the illegal instruction what's the actual instruction in the code that my computer considers illegal and maybe look up uh, you know um yeah so maybe we just need to establish the the minimal you know instruction set for the for the application right so what's the minimum instruction set uh or something like that i don't know Mm -mm. Mm -mm. honestly making it a text input instead of a disclaimer uh, then calling save buffer with the text input as a file would be fine that's actually not a bad idea honestly right so we can try to do that um so let me let me see but how do you render the the input text uh, input. So let me see. So let me copy paste this kind of stuff. Um, so we have this stuff. I'm going to do if one, and this one is going to be else. The classical sort of like a flip flop thingy. Uh, right. Input rect cut top, input rect hide. Okay, so that makes sense. Then shrink, get UI ID from location, parent UI. Okay, so I suppose this thing would work. Uh, all right, so, so let's do it like that. And maybe I'm going to do focus debug. So what did you, uh, didn't you like? What didn't you like? Else without, if really? Really? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It's like for a second I thought that maybe you can't have else in the compile time. If I'm, I'm sorry, I think I'm already getting tired. Um, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, that didn't work. This is probably because we also don't handle the input. Oh, we we never really rendered that. Wait a freaking second. We this is not enough. It's a draw filter. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Draw text input, and then we use the input. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So there's also label. Mm hmm. So let's go back. So after that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So this is a save file debug input. We should have, do we have uh, input? I don't remember actually. We do have input. Okay, so that's cool. So this is the input rectangle UID. Uh, you can't see by the way, uh, I'm sorry. So it is active and label. Um, let's put path in there. Let's put path and let's restart. Uh, semicolon, imagine asking semi for semicolons in 2023. Come on, what's that? Was that C? C was invented in 1970. Uh, all right, would you look at that? We've got the scheisse. We've got the scheisse. And uh, it does not respond to anything because uh, we don't handle the events there. So let's actually go ahead and handle them somehow. So now if I go to open uh, file dialog, uh, handle, open handle, yeah, there we go. So we probably pass, oh, event type. This one is very interesting, okay. Huh, I really like that. So if the event type is text input, we are sort of like propagating it into the input. So if open file dialog, navigate, whatever, nobody cares. Seems to be a bug in the text input module which generates text input event for Dell. 
Ooh, thank you so much for the comments in here. Thank you. That is... Uh-huh. So, if open file, navigate, and character, return true. So, we're taking the character, UTF32, uh, and we're being careful because it might generate the delete thingy. All right. And then, uh, we just text input uh, character into the input. Okay, okay, that's cool. And we should not forget to do the save uh, file dialog in here. And interestingly, I suppose we can do something like this. Mm -hmm. Ah, this is not how we're supposed to do that. Yeah, it has to be case. Uh huh. And I wonder, yeah, so let's pull like this. And now. If I do enter, uh, this is where we can save the current file. So this is where we can do that, actually. That's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see if it's compiled and so I'm going to put to do. Uh, save the uh, file. Right, and the path, we should get the path out of the input in here, right? So we should get the path out of the input. Uh, so let me see, let me see. Mm, you know, we could have actually, we could have print something in there. Let's turn this into print like this, just to be able to see. Right. Enter true. So this is to do essentially. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Alrighty, so new file, let's zoom in, uh, home streamer uh, test.c, and yeah, to do save file, but that didn't, yeah, okay, so that didn't hide it. Alright, I think we're like already one step away from working save dialogue. Even a very scuffed one. So, uh, what was the function uh, One Life's Left suggested to use? Uh, I need to find. Mm -hmm. Save buffer. Save buffer. I wonder. Like, let me try to find the save buffer functions. Like, which one should I call though? Save buffer. Um, hmm. So this is a buffer ID. Um, editor buffer save new file. So that's the problem though. That's the problem. So save buffer to disk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any function that we can just... Yeah, because... get buffer name get save uh, file name and this one <clears throat> yeah this one could be um buffer has file uh, how can we get the file the, the buffer itself all right how can we get the buffer itself so first of all, let me see uh, the definition for the buffer. It's a little bit annoying. It's a tiny bit annoying and a little bit hackish. So has a file. Yeah, has file. Buffer might not have a corresponding file. Uh, yeah. And let me... Honestly, when we press Ctrl S, we call to the platform save. Uh, you have to get the buffer ID from the active editor. Uh, so it all looks a little bit complicated for the amount of time that I've left. 
uh, for the amount of time that I've left. So I don't think I'm gonna go that route. Yeah, so like I literally have like a couple of minutes left and not gonna go there, but it's actually one step away from being able to save, right? So I, I, I can see that it's just like one step away. It's just like you need to do a little bit more routing and stuff like that. And I'm already going, uh, you know, for, for two hours and I prefer not to do that. Uh, right, so my goal for today was to actually explore uh, this text editor, not only from the outside, but more of from the inside, right? So more of from the inside, we looked into the private parts of this text editor and uh, we figured out how it works internally in such a pretty cool editor. So I think it does have potential. Uh, it does have potential and I really like uh, how reasonable uh, the source code is and how easy it is to, to find things in there. Right, so essentially what I'm gonna do off screen, I'm gonna probably finish this entire thing, uh, right? And I can basically try off screen to like wire it up into saving the buffer and then submit it as a as a pull request so uh, so we can have at least something working right so it's kind of scuffed but at least it's going to be working right so that's that's kind of cool right because as soon as you have something working you can improve it build upon it and uh, so on and so forth all right so that's a pretty cool editor um i guess that's it for today thanks everyone who's watching me right now i really appreciate it have a good one, and I see you all on the next recreation programming session, and we'll do something else, as usual. Right. Love you all. Mwah.